We're downsizing again, but this time not our house. It's for a loved one. And it's not just one house, it's three, and a combination of six. Let's go down that road. Hello, faithful people. I'm Marlene. And I'm Gary. And we are having a real different winter this year uh -huh. compared to what we've been through in the past. So a little bit about our background in case you're new to our channel. We live in 180 square feet. We live in a 26 foot fifth wheel with no slide outs. And we have been doing this now going on five full years. And we love it. It's great. But not everybody is a minimalist. <laughs> and one such case is my niece. So let's go back a little bit. Um, in 2016, late 2016, early 2017, we did our downsize. And what we have left is either in the RV with us or we have in one bedroom in his mom's upstairs. And every year I'm still going through things and saying, no, ah, don't need this anymore. Yeah, don't need that anymore. And so most of the stuff we're keeping there is in the event that someday we decide to settle down and into a house house, then we'll have a few pieces of things to get us started. And I mean, very minimal. Another thing that we did for downsizing was my mom. Back in 2019, I downsized her to get ready to go into an assisted living complex. And she moved from a house into an apartment, a small apartment, 500 square foot. So I have some experience with this. And we've been through this multiple times with some churches that we've served as well. We're from Wisconsin, and every summer we spend our summers up, usually by his mom, our oldest son, our kids. We have three children and six grandchildren up in Wisconsin. So we spend our summers up there. Through the winter months, we like to find church in the south somewhere where it's fairly warm and I can serve a congregation through the winter months, at least some of them. And then in the spring, we look forward to making our, our journey northward to see family up in Wisconsin. Again. Once more. Yeah. And in, the, in between, we, we're doing traveling and exploring and things too. And while we're serving a church, typically we are exploring the area that we're in. And this year, we're in Northwest Houston, and it just happens that my niece is in Northwest Houston. And she's been through an awful lot in the last year, last couple of years. Some things I want you to keep in mind as we go through this. My niece has ADHD. If you've ever dealt with anyone with ADHD, it can be all over the place. There's all different ways a person it responds to things or reacts to things when they have ADHD. And usually a lot of times medications will help, but a lot of times they don't always take the medications like they probably should. Some try to do it different ways. Some, some uh, become hoarders. A lot of people with ADHD are hoarders. A lot of people with ADHD are minimalists. You know, it really depends on which way their mind is thinking. My niece was not always a hoarder. And I can tell you that she is, and she can watch this video and be nodding her head because she admits she is. But she wasn't always that way. There's been a lot of circumstances in her life that have uh, brought it to this point. And one of them is that she inherited my sister's home. My sister was a neat hoarder. 
She was the queen of deals. She was always buying things and keeping them on hand to give to other people. She did a lot of good things with a lot of the things that she, she got on those good deals. But some things never left her home. They never got to the people she intended them to get to. So that's something that we're dealing with, um, with her house. Then um, after she passed away nine years ago, my brother-in-law stayed in that home for a while and then he moved back into his home two doors away. He has a lot of stuff in that house, but not nearly as much. So we thought, well, we would start with his house and clear that out and make it accessible for renting it out or selling it or something, but that didn't happen. Just in the last year, a little over a year, my niece has gone through a divorce. About the same time she became a full-time caregiver for my brother-in-law who was in a terrible accident. And so he's now living with her and nobody's living in his house. Someone is living in her mom's house but not caring for it. So my niece is now caregiver for my brother-in-law. She's also taking care of three houses and three yards and all the problems that come with them. For the past five months, Gary's been part-time. Yeah. And we'll tell you just a little bit about that situation in a minute very different experience for us this year than what in the past um but he was part-time so that gave us part-time to be helping my niece and there'd be times when i would be there by myself with her and he would be doing his church stuff we have moved things from one house to the other repurposed um reorganized we have emptied out garages only to have most of it go back in, but it's organized. <laughs> um, we've only sold a few things. I've, I've only, you know, she, she was able to get to the point where she was willing to let a few things go and I could sell them for her because she doesn't have time to be listening to a phone going ding, 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 ding when you're selling something online, like on Marketplace. So I was doing that for her, and then I would even meet the people when they came to the house to pick things up. But it's a very different culture here. We're dealing with multiculture, mm -hmm. uh, multi very diverse um, nationalities and, and different things like that. Um, it's a big city gas prices being what they are people don't want to come and pick things up so we've just been dealing with an awful lot of different scenarios than what i've dealt with in the past when you work with someone who has adhd we're going to give some tips so stick around for that on how to help someone downsize with someone who has adhd their focus is not always on one thing so there are many things happening at one time and if and they all become a priority because now they're all unfinished and she gets overwhelmed and i i get overwhelmed and, and gary has just been so patient just kind of going to the flow <laughs> kind of thing just don't know which way the flow is going it can change very quickly uh, the nature of somebody who's struggling with keeping their focus in one direction is that as soon as their attention shifts to something else, that changes the whole day schedule. Yes, and there are times when it's hard to get back on track again. There are days when you don't get back on track, and I'm making a list of things that we had started or were going to start, things that were important, but then they, they got lost in the shuffle of things and after this amount of time I have gotten to the point where it doesn't matter anymore <laughs> it, what matters is that she says it's helped her a lot 
and even though from our point of view it's <laughs> we've, we've just been going in circles at times uh, there are some things we've seen improve we, she has a better grasp of things it seems and that's a help to her yeah there are a lot of things that she's had to do herself now that her ex-husband used to do learning so much and I'm learning from her I'm learning things I never even knew when she goes looking for parts for something to fix it herself I'm just like wow <laughs> <laughs> you know um, and she can't afford to hire everything done so that's not a solution and we're not doing this video to ask for your solutions on things we're just letting you know what's been happening with us why you haven't been hearing from us very much if you followed our Facebook page, you know that we weren't even posting a lot on there for a while, but we did give a little update about a week or so ago. Yeah, it was the week of Easter, and just let people know that, that we're okay, we're healthy, mm -hmm. but we're just going through a lot. And um, most of it is my niece, and some of it is in part with the church that Gary is serving. Americans spend over $20 billion on storage units. Wow. Every year? When you think of the average cost to store something is about $190 a month. Some will be around $90 all the way up to $300. So the average is around $190, $200 a month is what people pay to store stuff that they can't fit in their homes because their homes are too full. It's not because the homes are too small. In most cases. It's just that they've got so much. And people are so blessed. To the point that a lot of donation places are overwhelmed with the donations. They don't know where to go with it all. That's how blessed this nation has been and how blessed as a people we are to have so much. And that's getting to be a problem with what to do with everything. and. It's good stuff. It's not garbage. It's yeah. not, it's useful stuff. A lot of it is brand new, never used. It could go somewhere. So we're going to give you tips on where some of that can go in just a second. That's a lot of money to be storing things that most people don't need, don't want, don't even remember what they have, haven't been in it for years. It's just so sad. We are very, very fortunate that my niece and my sister were clean hoarders. Mm -hmm. In other words, we don't have garbage that we're working with. We don't have gross things that we're working with. Um, she doesn't save food and uh, um, the, the floors are clean. The, y you can sit down on furniture. You might have to push some clothes to the side that she hasn't folded yet, but, but it, generally it's, it's mm -hmm. clean. And generally, it's safe. I had notes on this that I've been writing for, for months and putting this all together. And I'm really going off the cuff here because it all went out the window. I'm just trying to stick with the things that have stayed somewhat the same throughout the whole thing. We're pretty sure that ADHD is not contagious, but we're starting to wonder... <laughs> Oh, gosh, I love her. <laughs> anyway, um, she has books on how to, how to help a hoarder. She has books on a, how a hoarder can help themselves to get out of it. She has all these books. And she gave me some to look at. And I, I, I looked through so, a few of them. And there are a couple of things that they come to conclusions on in these books. First of all, these experts who have all these degrees after their names, cannot pinpoint what causes a person to be a hoarder. And every hoarder has a different situation. Every hoarder has different circumstances. There are really no two that are exactly the same. So know that. <laughs> but also know that if you're dealing with a hoarder, you're not alone. You cannot know how they're thinking. 
and they do not understand how you think. It's, it just cannot be comprehended. So working together, a minimalist mind and a very one that likes to be organized and have things in their place and, and, and not to have a lot of clutter versus dealing with someone who has a hard time with a lot of that. It, it takes a lot of patience. Number one, <laughs> patience. You have to realize that they did not become a hoarder overnight. And you're not going to help them get through all of that overnight either. This is a process that could take years. So understand that right off the bat. When you're dealing with a hoarder, it is important that you build a trust in the beginning my niece didn't even trust me to put dishes in the dishwasher or to put the dishes away or to make my brother-in-law a sandwich those are things that she kind of had to have control over in the beginning she got over it that fairly quickly which was good but it was a part about control and not wanting to burden people. And she was kind of dealing with both of that. But I convinced her that we were there to help. And so she finally did let us do some things. Mm. Um, but there were still a lot of things that she did not give up. If you're going, if you're thinking of throwing things away, just throw it away or just give it away. Well, you got to build their trust. And the ways to build the trust is to not throw those things or donate those things without their knowing or without their permission. With all the stuff my niece has in all three houses, she knows where everything is and what is in each house. Even though we have moved some things around now into the different houses, she still knows where things are. She has a, a brain that I'm, I'm just like, wow, <laughs> it's like a major computer. She knows all of that. She has cataloged, she has cataloged all of that into her head. Um, and a lot of hoarders are like that. They're going to notice if something's missing. So you've got to build trust. If they are in danger, if they are living in an unhealthy situation or environment, they need professional help. Seriously, do not feel that this is something you can do by yourself. They need professional help. Being a hoarder is a mental disorder. It is not something that they just decided one day, I'm going to be a hoarder. <laughs> it's something, something triggered it at some point in their lives and has continued on. And in my own experiences of people I know that have been hoarders, the one thing that a lot of them have in common, and from the books I've read as well, they have a fear of loss. They've been through some kind of a significant loss in their life at some point. And now they're hanging on to things because they don't want to lose those things too. It is important to ask questions in a non-threatening way, not angry way. Like, what are you doing with all this stuff? <laughs> that does not work. <laughs> ask questions. Why is this so important to you? Why is this one thing something that you just can't part with when it's nothing you're using anymore. You've, you don't have a use for it anymore. Why are you holding on to it? Tell me. And then listen to why. Some of their answers will surprise you. Some of their answers may be totally, huh? So in that case, you want to repeat back to them what they just told you. Repeat it back, say, so let me make sure I understand this. 
and then you ask them or you repeat that what they just told you word for word and then end it by saying is that what you're saying and sometimes that'll get them to think uh i well you know it makes them start to question their own reasoning again <laughs> Be patient because that may take a few times of asking about that one item several times. We have known people that have just taken things and backed up a big dumpster and just thrown everything out. Just Donation centers, a lot of them will pick up at the home. Maybe it's a, a, a case where they just don't feel they can take all that stuff somewhere. There are places that will pick it up. Salvation Army is one that sometimes will. Habitat for Humanity in some locations will. Um, uh, we found one that was a paralyzed veterans that they will pick things up at your, at your house. Uh, so just look around and check around and, and find out about places like that. Okay. Another thing is to suggest who can use these items? For instance, my niece has a lot of old eyeglasses in the cases. They belonged to her daughter when she was little. Uh, through the years, different old pairs of glasses. Lots of them. The Lions Club will take them. And they often have different collection places throughout a town or an area where you can just take them in and, and give them. And they will find someone who can use those glasses that needs them and can't afford to buy their own. That's a good thing. They will also uh, um, uh, take hearing aids too. Um, Best Buy will take electronics. And sometimes if it's still usable, they'll even give you a gift card in the store. So you don't have to pay them, they'll pay you to bring that stuff in. Places that will take metal. You can get paid by taking the, to those places. You may be doing a lot of running, but maybe that's your role. Let them decide what they want to let go of, and then you take care of taking it to those places. It's to offer things like, hey, I'm going to the grocery store. Can I pick something up for you? Or, hey, I, I've got an hour to free. Can I come over and you want me to help do some laundry? Even a person with a normal brain, and I don't know how many people have that anymore, <laughs> but even a place, a person who thinks Who's more, not plagued with <laughs> yeah, uh, to have three houses, three yards, taking care of an elderly parent, going and going through the divorce and going through that loss and going through all these different things all at the same time. It's huge. Whatever little things you can do to help, just find out what they will accept and let them, and then do those things. My niece goes to a group from her church, a life group at her church every week. And I have suggested to her how nice it would be if some of these boxes in the living room and some of the things, you know, if, if there was a way to have the group come to her house sometimes. She enjoys it. They really enjoy it. And to have her home be a place where they can come. Or any kind of company. To invite people over. To visit my brother-in-law. To visit with her. Uh, just to have future grandchildren. Knowing that it's a safe place for them to come to. Um, there's just a lot of, of good motivation to have a home that is that is more clear safer um, even though she's a clean hoarder uh, there are still cases where okay this is not wide enough for a gurney to get through in an emergency we need to clear this and keep it clear and so things like that just little reminders like that and she's pretty good about moving things then or letting us move them Occasionally, it might be a good thing just to get them out of their environment. 
sometimes you just have to just shut down have them go for a ride with you someplace scenic go for a walk someplace just get out maybe take them to a spa get a massage um, get their hair done um, just some little treat something anything just to get them out of that environment for a while I think that's a healthy thing to do too <laughs> I need a massage <laughs> I need a manicure <laughs> Threats and yelling and shaming does not work. It only makes things worse. If you cannot be patient, if you cannot handle it, it's best to just zip your lips and not say anything or you may have to leave and come back another time. It is also probably the most important thing you can do for yourself as a helper and for them as the hoarder and that is prayer <laughs> pray each time before you go there pray for them when you're not with them pray because God can do miracles and he can really help a lot and she has made a lot of progress baby steps but she has made a lot of progress in the time that we've been here. And part of me almost feels like I wish we could stay a little longer to just see where this could all go and see how much more we could do. But eventually, it's, it, you know, she's getting to the point where she knows these some of these things. She just has to pace herself. And it might be good for her just to have a break from us, too. <laughs> and for us to have a break from her yeah. for a while just to kind of let her work through things on her own. Uh, we can always come back and visit and mm -hmm. see how things are going. We do not go there every day. There have been times when I need a break and she needs a break. So we, we just kind of will take a break from each other for a while. So that's the situation that we've been dealing with for the last five months with my niece. The other thing that we've been going through is the church we've been serving. And that has been a very different experience. We're getting ready to leave very soon. And normally, when we are getting ready to leave, another, the full-time pastor is on his way or he has already been been installed and ready to go and we've just stuck around for maybe another week or two and then we left this time is gonna be very different and we're not gonna know for sure the direction it's going until this Sunday so at the end of this video we will let you know what the decision is on the future of this congregation um, we have been very quiet about the church. Normally I post lots of pictures about the church and uh, a history of it a little bit, and, but this time we've been pretty silent on the whole thing. Yeah, it's been different. Uh, one of the big things is that we are uh, in an, uh, an uncomfortable situation as far as uh, the congregation has been struggling for some time, quite some time, and we came in, um, I guess, as kind of a last effort to see if there would be um, enough healing time to work through some stuff and then push on forward and see where God would lead and bless them. Um, and we have seen some oh yeah, healing. We've seen, we've seen blessings and, and, and everything. It's... The uh, challenges might be more than this group can handle. I, I hesitate to say that because God does work miracles without anybody's help at all, uh, obviously. But uh, sometimes God's miracle isn't exactly what we have in mind. So we are, it, it's been a different experience from what we've had in the past, as Orlean explained. Uh, I'm sure that whatever the decision made on Sunday, it's going to be uh, God-pleasing and it's going to be blessed. Yep. And we know that 
there is a plan. God always has a plan. And he will take bad things, sad things, troubling things, and he can make good out of those things. And so what has been really unusual here has been, I guess, when we first drove in and we saw the condition of the property itself, we knew we were working with um, some depressed people. <laughs> and um, some of that has lifted. And we have seen some really good, positive, uplifting changes in some of the people. And more smiles, more laughing, more conversing with each other so that's been good but it may be too late for this congregation to turn around they have other congregations in the area the same uh, synod denomination and everything that are not terribly far away for them if they choose not to stay open they they will be allowed to they will have access to others. We aren't completely deserting them, even though in some ways it feels like we are, but we're not. They'll be in good hands. They'll have other vacancy pastors after us, too. So that's also another. But this Sunday is the big day, and we will find out, and we will put this at the decision at the end of this video and let you know what, what happens. I think this is long enough. If you want to uh, learn how I downsized an elderly parent, uh, you can click uh, check that out uh, at the end of this video. There will be a link that you can click on. It'll take you to that video on how I did that. Our time here is coming to an end very quickly to the point now where no new stuff with my niece, no more new things. We're just going to play some games or something a few nights here and there and and uh, just uh, try and relax. And I'm not selling anything anymore. And and as far as the church goes, like we said, there's a plan and, and good things will happen out of it. So it's uh, all in God's hands. And that is the way our lives always are. Well, we'll be soon back on the road and we got a few things to take care of on the RV. Nothing major, just some little things here and there. Make sure things are in place and ready to rattle on down the road again. Uh, got a few things done on the truck, uh, a few last minute checks on fluids and stuff like that. Then see if we can remember how to look it up again. <laughs> <laughs> we did not have the time to go and see a lot of the things that we would have liked to have seen here in Houston. There are a lot of free things to do. Uh, one of the videos that I will be showing sh very soon is the Arboretum. Nice place. That was very pretty, very peaceful. We were there for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. On our Facebook page, I'm going to be posting um, some pictures from uh, the Audubon Society that we went to. That was a much shorter mm -hmm. and uh, smaller place, but that was also very pleasant. And also, we donated one of my niece's huge bird cages to a rescue place and we got a tour of the, the facilities and uh, so I have some pictures of that I will be putting <laughs> on Facebook too and then we will be showing you pictures of our travels and when we get back to Wisconsin we've already decided God willing that we are going to be doing more traveling this summer than we have in the past we normally you know the kids are going to be working the grandkids are working we aren't going to be seeing a lot of them anyway so we're going to be spending some time with them, but then we're going to be trying to mix in more travel than we have in the past. That's what retired people do. Ah, yeah. That's what, yeah. <laughs> uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, especially to the end. I know this was long. And um, hopefully we're some help to you in some way. That's always our goal. Hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet. Next to a bell is going to pop up. Ring the bell and you'll be notified every time new videos come up. Check out our Facebook page. And uh, until next time, God, God bless. bless.